Peace to you, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's Friday, March 20th, and it's just a, an amazing time to be alive. I'm thankful for a Savior and a Shepherd who's leading and walking with me in this season and with you. I just stumbled upon something this week during my sermon prep that led me to want to share a series of, of short uh, reflections on the scriptures with you. I hope this will be an encouragement to you in this time. Uh, Lord willing, uh, this could just be one more source of refreshment for you throughout your weeks. I came across, as I was looking at the passage that I'm preaching on for this week in Luke chapter 19, a verb on the lips of Jesus. The verb, it is necessary. In the original language, it looks something like this. Dei, or rather dei. You can see the accents over the last syllable there. Dei. And it means uh, it is necessary, or sometimes it must, or I must. Well, I was thinking about this. Jesus has certain things that he considers necessary. Necessary. In that context, in Luke 19, it was necessary for him to come to Zacchaeus' house, that he could bring salvation to seek and to save this lost man. But I just want to spend some time with you thinking about what was necessary for Jesus. Why? Because in this season where we're stuck at home, where we're with our kiddos, where we're alone, where we're displaced, where we're wondering what to do with ourselves, we come back to the question of what is most important, what is necessary in life. And as I look back over the Gospel of Luke and the moments where Jesus says, this is what's necessary, I found it deeply encouraging, and I hope that you'll find it encouraging too. I'm just going to look at one of those with you right now. If you want to turn in your Bible to Luke chapter 2, you can look with me at this uh, moment in Jesus' earthly life that Luke records and the other three Gospels don't. We get a, a glimpse of his childhood when he went to the temple. And you remember the story, his parents, uh, earthly parents, um, uh, Mary, his, his true mother, and, and Joseph, his earthly dad, they, they left with the family and thought that Joseph was just with his cousins or something. And then they realize he's not there. And three days go by, they're searching, and they finally find him. Where of all places but in the temple? And when they see him, they're astounded because he's there. He's, he's showing up all the scribes and the teachers of the law. He's, he's astounding them with his understanding and with his questions. And when they come to him in verse 48, here's what they say. The mother says, Mary says, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. You can imagine, right? <laughs> I can only imagine as a parent how freaked out I would be if I accidentally left my dear kiddos somewhere and thought they were with somebody else and then they actually weren't. Oh, man. It'd be a mess, right? Well, hear how Jesus responds. And don't read into his voice anything smart or snarky. He's responding as the Son of God, an obedient son, ultimately obedient to his true father. What does he say? And he said to them, verse 49, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know, listen, that I must be in my father's house? Quite literally, in the original language there, in verse 49, Jesus says, Why are y'all seeking me? Don't y'all know that in my Father's house it is necessary for me to be? It's necessary for me to be in my Father's house, Jesus says. That's priority number one. That's what's necessary. So as we think briefly about what is necessary in life, perhaps you're sad in your heart as I am in mind that we can't come together and worship in the church. But the Father's house is available to you. You have access to God by faith. Since you are justified by faith, you have access by grace to the Father. The veil has been torn and you, child of God, sinner though you are, are justified 
delighted in, adopted as a son, a daughter, welcomed in God's presence at all times, as are all people of God in all places. In fact, an incredible promise in Ephesians 2.22 is that in Christ, y'all are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. You can be in God's house all the time as you go to him, as you delight in him, as you pray, Father in heaven, as you look to Christ in the scriptures, as you meditate upon his promise, as you sing songs of deliverance, hymns of praise. You can do that all the day long, all week long, wherever you are. And I hope you will. I hope you'll join us on Sunday at 1030 a.m. here at uh, Trinity's Facebook page for a Facebook Live worship uh, time as we just have family worship together. Uh, there are some other opportunities for you to seek your father and to, to enjoy life in his household uh, that we'll be making available to you. Take advantage of those. This is necessary for the Christian whose life is hidden in Christ, who is united to Christ as part of the body of Christ here on earth. It is necessary to be in our Father's house, just as our Lord said it first for us, so that we could be welcome there too. So I pray that uh, you would be blessed to experience the true necessities, first of all, the necessity of being in God's house. God bless you.